What's up, divas and divas? It's your girl. You guys already know what time it is. What's today? It's Wednesday. Yes, it's Real Talk Wednesday, okay? So first of all, you guys, I am really excited. Or not, I don't... You know what i'm i'm excited because i woke up today you know what i'm saying so i'm really excited about that like if i wake up any day every day i'm excited about that but you know it it starts off as like a really shitty day you know what i'm saying like it kind of did for me like i let me tell you first of all i gets up at 6 30. monday through fridays is the time i get up and you know i have to bring my daughter nay to school first then i come back for like 20 minutes and bring mumsy to school even though the schools are right here inside the community i still like you know it's like a mile i want to drive them there or it's probably not even a mile but either way it may be it may be not i'm not sure but when i come in when i'm done with dropping everybody off i come i put my workout clothes on you know what i'm saying i'll work out and shit like that for like 20 to 30 minutes. I'm not saying I'm going full throttle with the shit, but I'm just doing what I need to do. Okay. Not trying to just like overkill myself, dead on arrival type shit. So, you know, I, I, I normally do that, but I didn't do that today only because for one or yesterday, because, you know, if you guys don't know, I already suffer from like bad fibroids, fibroid tumors. So, you know, I need to get a hysterectomy. So when it's that time of the month, it's so painful for me. Like it's excruciating pain. I do apologize, but the sunlight is not my control, but it's very, it's just very painful. It feels like contractions, like I'm going through like the labor pain. So for like the first three days, I'm in like this horrific pain. There's really nothing that I can take that will take the pain away unless I go and get a full hysterectomy, which I'm happy to say Friday, I go for my appointment and we'll see what it goes from there. But anyway, so, you know, Sunday, I thought I felt pretty all right because the pain was just like, probably like at like 20%. And I had things that I needed to do. Like, you know, I have had many people emailing me like, well, when are you going to put new wigs up on your website? And I haven't done that in probably like two weeks because, you know, I've been so busy. And then I really did honestly plan to do that this past Saturday, but I was so out of it that, you know, I couldn't even take the pictures or finish curling the wigs that I had. Like I've made like four brand new wigs. I've made them and you know, like I had my other wigs. So I, I just couldn't get around to it. So I do apologize, but I will have a lot up either this Friday or Saturday. But so, you know, what was I even getting at? Um, I was talking about working out. Okay. So I didn't do that. So, and I didn't, you know, I didn't do any videos this weekend. I just did some yesterday, Monday. So anyway, um, today, like I said, I didn't exercise because, you know, sometimes it's still, I'm still feeling a little, not sick, but you know, I can feel like the, the, the pain, like the contractions and I'm going to call them contractions because that's what the fuck they feel like, but the cramps, I could feel them. So, you know, I'll take off like two days from exercising if it's on a weekday, like Monday through Friday, a business day. Um, I don't, I don't do this shit on the weekends. I don't exercise on weekends, but Monday through Friday, I'll do it. But if, you know, I'm still sick or I'm still in pain or I'm still having cramping, I'll, you know, I'm definitely not going to do it. So I decided not to do it today. So I sat, I came in the house, I sat down on the couch and I was just checking my email and I was watching this stupid fucking show that I don't even think it's that stupid anymore. And I've been addicted to it for the past week, which is Z Nation on Netflix. <clears throat> Now, at first, I really wasn't a big fan of it because I felt like they were poking fun at The Walking Dead. And um, because I've seen a lot of similar things in Z Nation. But I come to really like the show. I don't know why. So I'm sitting there. And if you guys watch it, you know, let me know down below. So <clears throat> I'm watching that for like 30, 40 minutes. And then I'm looking at the time. I'm like, oh, well, let me go take a shower because at 9 o'clock my time, my husband be calling me on his lunch break, which is 12 o'clock his time in New York. So, you know, I always want to be done with everything that I've been, I, I have to do that morning, <clears throat> which is exercise and take a shower. Okay. So mind you, I come back home at like 745 and drop my mom's off. So I have enough time and he'll call me like around 905, 906, whatever. So anyway, I didn't, you know, I looked at the time and I said, let me go take a shower. Let me go take my vitamins and stuff which are always on the kitchen counter. So I'm looking on the kitchen counter and I see crumbs and shit. And I look over and I see the bag of 
bagels, everything bagels, you know, everything bagels. So anyway, to make a long story short, I know nobody in the house eats them but my son. So I'm going off on him about the bagels because you left the bag wide open and you left a mess and you just like ate that in the middle of the night. Like who wants bugs? I had to go. My point is that's what pissed me off. And why do you have to constantly keep telling your child to do something? Like, don't, do you guys ever, <clears throat> excuse me, do you guys get this? Like, understand what I'm saying? Like, you constantly have to tell, not even just like in a teenage child, like, you know, when I say teenage, I mean like 13 and 12 and stuff. But when it, why do you always have to tell like your grown kids something over and over and over again? The same thing over and over and over again, meaning clean up after yourself or whatever it is, take the garbage out. Or, like you guys, like, don't they, do you guys ever think that they get tired of hearing us? say the same things over and over to them. Like, I'm trying to figure this out. Am I the only one that feels like they should be tired? I know I'd be tired of hearing my own motherfucking voice. I'd be tired of hearing my own self-talk. I don't even like editing my videos sometimes, okay? If I'm high, I don't even like to edit my videos because I don't want to hear my, I get irritated with hearing my own self speak. And I don't know why, but I just get irritated by hearing my own self speak. But I get tired of hearing my own self yelling about the same things all the time. So I would think that you being the bitchy, meaning you're the person that's getting bitched the fuck out by me, the bitcher, wouldn't you get tired of being yelled at about the same thing? Like when you, I know I would. And, and the way that I go off, I know I would definitely get tired of hearing your motherfucking voice. And like, so that's what pissed me off. It was a great morning to that. I mean, I'm not gonna let it ruin my day, but like, I just be trying to figure out these kids sometimes. Like, just like I said to my husband last night on the phone, the, this generation, is fucked up. They like on some fucking stupid shit. They be acting real stupid. They just fucked up. Like, and I feel this way, like strongly, not about all of them, but about enough of them to where it's like, damn, I'm glad I was born when the fuck I was born. So for those people who be like in their twenties calling me old ass, oh, you old, you old, or in their thirties calling me old bitch, you'll get to my age one day. And then you'll look back and you'll say, oh, all the dumb shit that I did, or look at all these, look at these teenagers now. They're so dumb and disrespectful. We didn't do that in my day. You might not have did it to the extreme that they do it today, but damn, you did it. It's like, okay, I'm glad I was born in the seventies. Okay. The seventies. Because if I was like in my twenties right now with the rest of these people that act crazy and, and act the fuck up, I think I would have just moved to Mars. I would have had to leave the leave the whole fucking planet. Okay? Because the way that some of these people carry on with themselves is like ridiculous. Like seriously ridiculous. And it's just like I don't understand people sometimes, even like with your own kids. She's like, why did you do that? How many times did I tell you not to do that and you did it anyway? Like, were you trying to see if I was wrong? Because you were like, prove me wrong. Like, anyway, other than that, I've been fine. You know, like I said, I wasn't able to put up any wigs, but I have made some new ones, frontals and closures. And guess what? A bitch has made a half wig. Let me tell y'all, I know y'all gonna be like, what? You've probably been made half wigs. I've never made a half wig before, ever, okay? I made a U-part wig, I made closure wigs, I made a um, lace frontal wigs, I made 360 wigs, I've even made the closure wigs that have the little tiny closures, and you can just plop it in the middle, I've even made those, I've even made a wig that just has no closure or frontal at all, it's just a full cap wig, you know, it just you just keep sewing it around. When you have one that you absolutely love, then you definitely have to recreate it. So, first of all, long story short, very short, I got this U part wig from Her Given Hair, which, if you guys did not know, is a sister company to RPGShow.com. Yes, they are. So, anyway, um, and Her Given Hair just specializes in nothing but yakky texture hair and kinky texture hair. That's all they specialize in, it's for women of color. And they have some beautiful hair. So anyway, they sent me a U-part wig and then they sent me this closure to go with it. But the way they constructed the U-part was like, how the hell do you expect me to fit this closure on this U-part? The U-part, the closure just didn't fit at all. Meaning the closure, the U was kind of just off shape. It, was, it just wasn't going to work. So what I did was I had to cut the U out of the, the wig and then I had to sew it and make it into a half wig. That's what I did. But I loved it so much. It was like this case was kinky straight. I loved it so much um, that I wore it 
enough times, but I, not a lot. And I gave it to my daughter, Tati. You guys know she chopped her hair off and she absolutely loves it. Like I let her borrow it and I have not gotten it back in like the six months, five months now. Never gotten it back. She just doesn't take it off. She wears it all the time. So I was like, damn, by the time I get it back, it's probably not going to be no hair left to it. So anyway, I have gotten some get, get her picky straight hair. I have like tons of hair. Like what I say, I have tons of hair. I have tons of hair here. From buying hair to just like I have tons of hair and I don't have a lot of frontals and closures probably like about 12 but I have so much hair that I can make probably like 40 wigs so anyway I got some of the kinky straight hair and I just decided I'm gonna go for it I'm gonna try to make me one and I made it on Saturday as this Sunday Saturday despite the pain that I was in I'm the type of person I cannot sit still and not do nothing all day long like I can't just sit there and just watch the TV show and not do anything I have to be doing something whether it be me editing a video which I'm not paying 100% attention to at that time if I'm editing a video but or to me making a wig now when I make it a wig I'm giving it all my attention I'm looking up and I'm sewing so it does take me a little bit longer than normal especially if it's a television show that I like so I sat there and just just sat, had a heating pad on and just sat and made me a half wig. Okay. Well, not me, but I should have, I should have made me one too, but you know, I made it for the website and I really did want to keep it. It's 22 inches or is it 20 inches? I think it is, it's 22 inches because the wig that I have on is um, 20 inches. So it's 22 inches and it is the kinky straight and I made it on an adjustable wig cap. So and of course, I did have to cut some of it away, like the part where it comes all the way up here because it's a half wig. And it has combs right here in the front, and it will lay flatter than an actual half wig that you buy from, like, you know, model model or anything. It will lay flatter, so it's not all humped up. It doesn't have all that extra padding. It has the essentials that it needs. So it has two combs here where you will put them, and then it has a co two combs in the back. So I give you two combs instead of one. And you also get the adjustable straps that you can pull at the nape if you need to make it any tighter if it's perfectly I will be posting it up with um, the other units this coming weekend so you will see a picture of me with a stocking cap on and a wig cap only because I'm a half a wig you're gonna probably be like where's the rest it's just so you guys can see the halfway okay and I'm also making another one now but it's not kinky straight I didn't have any more kinky straight here um it is um, body weight or straight straight so yeah, I'll be making, I am in the process of making that. So that's just what I wanted to share with you guys. But other than that, nothing. Today's look, today's freaking look of the day is barely any makeup, okay? I didn't do no eyeshadow. I didn't do no um, press um, full coverage foundation or highlight or contour. I didn't do any of that, you know what I'm saying, or lipstick. Um, all I did was my eyebrows and my eyeliner and some pressed powder, okay? So I'm going to share with you guys because I, I feel like my neck is too light. You ever do your makeup and you just feel like, okay? So anyway, before we even get to this real talk, because I know I'm jibber-jabbering, I wanted to share with you guys some of the things that I did get. There's only two products, but um, I love this so much. I was going to do it in my What the Hell video, but I'm going to just show you guys right now. So anyway, Octoly. You guys know I love Octoly to the utmost because you get um, you get gifted free products and in return all they ask you to do is a social media um, post. It could be either YouTube or Instagram depending on the actual um, company that you are trying to apply for to get the product. Octoly starts you off with five points. Each point is worth one product. You will start off with five points and your store it's called a free store. Your store will not have as many high-end products. You have to work your way up to that by just sticking to your commitment of reviewing products and just reviewing. The more you review, the more products you'll get in your store, even higher end, and the more tokens you'll get. So I'm up to like nine tokens, so I can pick up to like nine things or whatever. And I have, I do have like a, high, a lot of higher end makeup and just lower end makeup. I have like a lot of different stuff. So anyway, as gifted um, from Laura Mercier, that is also on a brand that is on Oxley, I did receive this Matte Radiance Baked Powder, and it's Bronze 04. Let me tell you all something. First of all, I am loving this, which is also was gifted to me by Laura Mercier for Oxley, which is the primer. And I did use that today because I needed it to stick to something. And this also was another gifted product from Laura Mercier from Oxley. Now, this stuff I use all the time. So if y'all see me looking a little bit more bronze and tanned it's because of this it's the setting powder and it's a translucent medium deep so it was 
I thought it was going to be too dark for me and it is a little bit because it's just a little bit so I have to go really light with this stuff but I love it like for real it'd be making me look so like flaw I just love it it makes me look flawless like seriously it has me looking flawless to the 10th power so you know when I when I use it I go very light-handed like tap 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 like because if I do like like how you supposed to do a girl would probably be coming on here looking at all types of tans and bronze and y'all be like girl why what's going on so anyway they get to me this I use my primer right and this is in the color bronze 04 it was the last one so the the color that I really wanted was out of stock meaning other influencers had applied for it so they didn't have it so I said I'm gonna just try this so this is the color that they give me and I kind of do like it like you know of course I have to be a little bit light-handed on it but it actually works good like you know I'm gonna just darken my neck area up a little bit it actually works really good um, it does keep your makeup um, looking fresh and you just got like this different look I don't know sometimes I like to look a little bit of red toned I don't know about y'all I just like to, not even red toned excuse me I just like to look a little bit darker sometimes you know and that's just how I feel come on now but I do like this stuff um the packaging is really nice and it's I think it's like I said it's baked yeah it's a baked powder you can always tell when they're baked because they have like this little round rounded area but I like this stuff like listen hunties and then what I did was I wasn't really going to set my face but listen hunties I was like it's powder girl set it so I used another product that I was gifted from Oxley which is by Gerard Cosmetics, okay, which was gifted to me by Gerard Cosmetics, which is their Slay All Day Setting Spray. You can use this before you put your makeup on or after, so, or both. So I like to use it before and after because it does smell really, really good, and it kind of gives your face a tingle. And I know, y'all know I'm not lying, because look, bam, this is the same one, but it's empty. This was the peach. So they do come scented and it smells really good. So I love this stuff because it gives me like that nice dewy kind of look because my face be looking kind of like dry and ashy. But it does set your makeup on. It does keep your makeup on hold. So definitely this is like a bonus. Like when I ran out of this, I have like this much left. I was like pissed off. Um, but then when I seen that they had another campaign, I went ahead and applied for it because with this one, you also get like a travel size one, which is the watermelon setting spray. And I, I just used this one once because I really do like the peach. I'm not like, like the hugest fan of watermelon, but it doesn't smell that bad. But this is cool because you can put it in your purse or you can bring it with you away. I'm going to bring this with me to New York because this will be the perfect size, even though I bring this one too. But I'm going to bring this one this time because it's just so cute and dainty. But yes, Gerard Cosmetics. They have like some really, really good setting spray and it smells so good. You can even smell it on your face after you've applied it. And like, you know, a few minutes later, you can still smell it. So I absolutely love Gerard Cosmetics, um, especially their setting spray. They do have other stuff, but, you know, I love the setting spray just because of the tingle and the scent. So you can definitely check out Oxley, you guys, if you make videos, you know, all the products was gifted to me. And in return, what did I do? I did a video review or just how I felt because basically it's how I felt about the products. But, you guys, so on that note, let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk that you would like me to, you know, broadcast on YouTube or my channel, then go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. If you want to change the name of the people that you're referring to in the email, then you can go ahead and let me know that you did so. If you didn't, 99.9% .9 of the time, baby zaddies, I will change it for you if you didn't. Oh, you didn't tell me did. And by the way, in case you guys are wondering about the hair that I'm rocking today, the video will be up tomorrow. This is a lace front from RPGshow.com. You guys know how I feel about them. They are a little bit pricey. Um, I've been rocking with them for nine years. They are a little bit pricey. They are. I, I'll be the first to admit to that because if I had to spend my coins, I would not be. Um, but I will admit to this. Their freaking lace is so bomb as fuck. Like, seriously. You don't even see the lace. Like, look, do you see the lace? Like, kid you not, yesterday when I was um, trying to lay the baby hairs down when I did the video, because I haven't taken it off yet, <clears throat> I couldn't even see the lace. It's a light medium lace, but I don't know if it has to do with the lace 
fabric or the color because their fabric is a little bit different. Their lace texture is a little bit different from other companies I've noticed. And I don't know if it's because of that that makes it very, very transparent or if this is the best color, like light medium, because I've gotten light, light brown, excuse me, before from other companies and it didn't look like this. But anyway, let's get into this because I talked you guys ears off now. Huh? 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 What? Damn. All right, you guys, let's get into this. Hey, April, you don't have to change my name. I'm sure you get this every Real Talk video, but I adore your personality. You're always so real and gut punched. Um, and gut punch. People with the, um, you, you are always so real and gut punch and with the truth. I admire that about you because I am the exact opposite. I've always been told I'm too nice, which is why I'm probably in the predicament I'm in right now. So I've been married five years and I've been with my husband a total of eight years. We have normal ups and downs, but overall I'm very much still in love with him and very happy. Okay. Except for this one thing that my husband does that makes my blood boil. He smokes weed with his ex-baby mama. It all started back in 2013 when his grandmother passed away. I met the baby mama for the first time a few years before the funeral. She drove eight hours to bring their daughter, AKA my bonus daughter, to the services. Baby girl was seven years old at that, at that time. As soon as his baby mama pulled up, she hopped out the car, gave me a big hug, introduced herself to me, and hugged my husband as well. Baby girl was asleep in the back seat. After they hugged, I literally blinked my eyes maybe all of two times, and before I knew it, baby mama was reaching in her ashtray to grab a leftover half a blunt and started smoking it in the driveway of his family's home where everyone was meeting before the funeral. I was shocked, but I didn't say anything. That was her business. Before they arrived, my husband and I were on our way to run a quick errand. So I got into the car to wait on him to give them, his baby mom, an opportunity to chit chat and catch up. Also, I didn't want to smell like smoke before the funeral. Our car window was up, but I clearly heard her ask him, you want to hit this? As she handed him the burning blunt, my antennas flew up. I didn't hear his response, but hell, I didn't need to because he had already taken it out of her hand and was blowing it down. April, I was so appalled and enraged, I started to open my car door and cuss him the fuck out. What the hell was he thinking? However, something in me just didn't want to start any shit right before the funeral. So I bit my tongue. Plus his family already thought there would be tension between her and I, but we'll get into that later. I also kind of felt like it wouldn't have been appropriate to snap on him because emotions were high. He was grieving and he probably wasn't thinking straight. I know people grieve in their own ways, drinking, smoking, eating, not eating, etc. So I decided to speak with him about it later in private. Later that night before bed, I approached him about the smoking, about him and her smoking. He asked me why I didn't say anything right then and there when it happened. He said it wasn't that big of a deal since they smoke right in front of me. Plus she's married too. So he felt like it wasn't anything personal. April, he didn't understand my point of view at all. I even asked him to put himself in my shoes. What if it were me and my ex-baby father? He said, if it happened the exact way, he wouldn't care. No biggie. I think that's a goddamn lie. We didn't, we did, <clears throat> excuse me. We didn't get anything resolved that night except for a pointless screaming match. Our energy was off for the rest of that weekend. Afterwards, we drove three and a half hours home and we really never brought it back up or spoke about it again. Okay, here's the later. Another reason why I didn't initially say anything when they were smoking is because his family already thought the baby mama and I would be awkward around each other. I'm not really sure why because I don't come off as a confrontational person. Plus, it wasn't about me or her. We were there to pay our respects. His family did the most. I rolled. They tried to pep talk me before she arrived. Little did they know I wasn't phased. At that time, I was 26 and too grown to bring that type of energy to a funeral. 
After all of that, I definitely didn't want to argue with him over smoking with her and cause tension that his family had already expected. Also, his family have no idea that he smokes weed. I also want to be clear that I'm not against weed smoking at all. I don't care if anyone smokes. Heck, even I used to smoke a little weed in my experimental college days nine years ago, but it just wasn't my thing. Okay, so that was the first time, and we hadn't been around the baby mama like that in five years. They stay four hours away from us in the same state, just different city. I honestly thought from the fight we had about them smoking pot back in 2013 that it would never be an issue again. Girl, I was wrong. Fast forward to this June 2018, baby girl who is now 11 was graduating from middle school, so we made the one-day trip to go see her graduate. Also, they live two minutes from the ocean, so we all decided to make a beach day after the ceremony. Upon arriving at the baby mama house, she and her husband... My mouth got a little dry. Upon arriving at the baby mama house, she and her husband and my husband smoked while my son and I were changing clothes to get ready for the graduation. Her husband came to find me to offer me to come smoke too. I told him I didn't smoke and he apologized for not knowing. They also smoked after the graduation while we changed into our swim clothes. The three of them smoked again in their car in the parking lot of the place where we were having lunch. My son, baby girl, and her two stepbrothers kept me occupied all the while they're over there puffing the magic dragon, shaking my head. The three of them smoked again on the beach. The three of them smoked again after the damn beach when everyone was getting cleaned up. And the three of them smoked yet again before our four-hour ride back home. I also found out baby mama gave my husband weed as a thank you for making it to the graduation and having to turn around the same day to drive four hours back home. What? Wow, what a thank you gift. Rolls my eyes. Going to her graduation was mandatory and we wouldn't have missed it for anything. So what the fuck was that about? We took baby girl back home with us for the summer. So on our way to send baby girl back home this August, we all split the trip and met baby mama two hours away at this restaurant. And well, 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 wouldn't you know it, I saw baby mama slip my husband a bag of weed in the parking lot while getting baby girl suitcases out of our trunk. Now I'd hate, now I've had it. Of course, another argument and still no understanding. He says I'm tripping over nothing. Okay, now on to present day. Just last week, September 2018, baby girl, baby mama, her husband, and his two sons, wait. Last week, September 2018, baby girl, baby mama, baby mama husband, and their two sons were evacuated because of Hurricane Florence. So they decided to come to our city. Baby girl stayed with us for one night last Friday and left Saturday evening. Of course, when my husband came back home from dropping her off, he was high. Then yesterday, Tuesday, September 18th, they decided to go back home, back to where, you know, they was from the baby mama and them. So we went to visit baby girl to say our goodbyes. While we were there, my husband said he was stepping out for a cigarette with, cigarette with baby mama and her husband. And what do you know? They all came back inside high. It's obvious we don't see this um, baby mama much. Um, him and I have argued countless times about him smoking with her and or them. He still feels like because I'm not a smoker, I can't understand that it's harmless. And especially since her husband is cool with everything, I should be too. But now I'm just fed up. Today is my husband's birthday and we hadn't said but two words to each other. Happy birthday and thank you. April, am I wrong for feeling like I'm being disrespected or should I just chill and get out and get with the program? I feel alienated and disrespected by him. And then when it's all three of them dipping off and smoking, I feel like Mary fucking Poppins because... Why she said the same thing I be saying. I feel like Mary fucking Poppins because I'm the only one in the house tending to all these damn kids. Like, what the fuck? Am I in the twilight zone here? He really can't or won't even sympathize with me on the idea of how fucked up this is. I just, I digress. I digress. We barely see the baby mama, so I'm not trying to make a lifetime decision over a momentary circumstance. It's literally years in between the times where we have to to be around baby mama for an extended amount of time. Other than that, it's normally drop off pick up at our normal two hour point. My husband and his baby mama dated for eight years and one of his complaints about her um, about her is that she smoked too much and they used to argue about it. 
Since I've known my husband, he never smokes an, ex an excess smoker. And up until that graduation trip, I never knew he could smoke so much. After work, some people have a beer and go to bed. Well, he has a blunt, and that's normally the extent of it. And not that it matters, but everyone in the story is, is black, except for the baby mama. She's white. I'm so excited to hear your raw opinions on this matter. Also, I, I will be reading the divas and divos opinions in the comments as well. Thank you for reading, April. Love. Um, I'm not going to say your name. I'm putting pics in so you can see who you're talking to and who I'm talking about. Laughing my ass off. So let me tell y'all, first of all, I had got this like, you know, on the 18th. Um, and I read it and I was like, damn, this is long. But then when I was reading it, I was like, oh, hell to the no. Because first of all, let me tell you something. I looked at the pictures and then I didn't even read the entirety of the email when I first read it. I just read probably to like, I stopped reading when she said that people go to work and have a beer. I stopped at that because I knew it was kind of like the ending. So I just scrolled and looked at the picture. And then I was looking at the pictures and I was like, well, you know what? That's her because she sent me a single photo shot of her. And that's her standing by her husband because they all hugged up, booed up. And then that's baby mama right there at the end, the white chick. And that's um, baby, her husband and the kids. So I was like, okay, so no wonder why it's okay. I mean, like, I don't know if it's just me. And this is like, not on no racial type shit. I'm not like, don't, don't, don't go racial profiling me because... It's not even that serious, but I have noticed, I'm not saying that I know for a fact, but I do notice just from seeing past relationships, watching shit on TV, like real shit, not no fucking sitcoms and shit that white women, when they have a black man, they're just kind of like a little bit lenient, not like saying we got us as black women got the whoop out and we whooping them and shit, but we probably are, you know what I'm saying? But they just like... They're not, not all of them, but the, the stories that I have seen, they're not as aggressive as like some black women would be. Not all black women are aggressive and um, just straight up blunt. Like I, I'm very aggressive. I, I'm just, I, I, this is me. I'm just very opinionated. Okay. But I just noticed that they're kind of like, not cool with everything, but maybe cool with too much shit. You know what I'm saying? And then when she showed me that, when I looked at the picture, I was like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's why she think it's okay. Like, I don't know about y'all, but I, let me tell you something. If I was to, if that was me in that situation and that was my husband that got out the car and was smoking with his baby mama, Man, let me tell you something. First of all, I wouldn't be still sitting in that motherfucking car. I don't know. Maybe I would. If it if it was a funeral, I probably wouldn't say nothing right then and there because I wouldn't want to be disrespectful. But then again, knowing me, I might get out the car and I wouldn't be loud, but I would be up in his face like, um, what the fuck are you doing? And the look, that's all I would do. But if it's like an ongoing thing, like, okay, first of all, I, I know there's like a fine line between love and hate. There's a fine line too between like relationships and baby mamas. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like we in a marriage or a relationship and that's your baby mama. Like get your kid and just keep it pushing. Y'all don't need to be smoking together because y'all, this is how I look at it. Listen, I just don't feel like that shit is cool. Okay. Straight up. Um, no chaser. I, I just really don't feel like that shit is cool. Like to me, like, Y'all already was fucking. Y'all was together for eight years. I don't give a fuck if y'all was together for three, four years. Y'all was fucking. Y'all had some type of feelings for one another at one time. So y'all not about to be chummy, chum, chum, hitting the blunt in front of me. Like, we're not about to have that. And on top of that, so you putting your mouth on something that this bitch done put her mouth on. Like, that to me, I, I don't know, but I be analyzing all kind of shit and all kind of shit go through my mind at the time. And I know you got to be grown about shit, but this is the grown up in me. Like, and if you grown up, then you know that there is a fine line between love and motherfucking hate and disrespect and respect. So to me, I don't feel I don't feel like that's right. Like I don't feel like, you know, you should be like doing shit like that with your baby mama in front of me. I don't feel like you should be doing that shit behind me, like not even knowingly. Like I don't feel like that is respectable. But 
her husband, you know, tried to make it seem like, well, we just at the funeral, it's nothing, you know, and she's, she's married. Okay. So, so what the fuck she's married? Who gives a fuck? I could care less if the bitch was married, divorced, um, married four or five times. Just because someone is married don't mean that they're not going to cheat on somebody. Like, let's be realistic here. Because that was the excuse that, um, what did she say? I could call her in this. I don't remember what she said I could call her in this. Um, Paris, okay. Paris' husband is telling her, like, you know, that's just my ex-baby mama. That's my ex. She's my baby mama. And she married too. Like, okay, so what? She's married too, but she had feelings for you then. What makes it to say that she doesn't have feelings for you now? Just because she's with somebody else doesn't mean that she doesn't have feelings for you. Okay? Like, let's be on some real shit. So I, I just find like, okay, we get it. People grieve in different ways and they drink, they sleep, they eat, whatever. Who knows? But the whole point is, you're not about to stand here and smoke in front of me with your baby mama. But also, let's not forget the fact that, dear old girl, baby mama, get out, pull up to somebody else's house at a funeral for not her family, but her child's family. And get out into that person's home and pull a blunt out with her and smoke it in the in the driveway where everybody else is meeting like who the fuck doing a funeral like who the fuck does that that just shows you right there that bitch don't have no motherfucking class like i don't know about y'all but a bitch like me would never do nothing like that like that's some real fuckery shit that's like some backwoods redneck type of shit like you gonna get out your car to some people's home that is not even your family, but your child's family. And you don't even fucks with them like that. And you're going to roll up in the drop. You're going you gonna to puff, puff and pass in the driveway. Like how disrespectful is that? That's disrespectful for one. That's when I would have said something like, you're going to stand here in the driveway and smoke with her during your family's funeral. Like how disrespectful is that? I find that to be very disrespectful. Even if you're standing there smoking a cigarette, walk off and do that shit, okay? Don't do that with people standing around. That's disrespectful. So old girl ain't really got class know how. And while y'all are there, y'all at the ceremony for the little girl who done graduated from middle school. And they, listen, I'm not against people smoking weed because, you know, hello. But that, damn, that's, I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't be high all day long because I will be like bloated and I will gain so much weight from being high all day long. And on top of that, I'll be so lethargic, lethar lethargic that I won't want to do shit. And I don't like feeling like that, wanting to be lazy and wanting to eat like that. Those two combos don't go together. But, you know, that's other people's preference. Um, if you like it, I motherfucking love it. But here's the thing. They done... They done walked off several times and several times and several times. Yo, she's crazy because did she break it down to me? And then after the beach and then after McDonald's and then we went to the grocery store and then in the parking lot of the grocery store. And then when we went to the carnival, like, oh, shit, she fucking was you writing this shit down, bitch? Let me tell you something. You done already had an argument with the dude. You done already said what you done said to him about how you feel about the weed smoking with his baby mama. You don't even complain like that about the shit when he's smoking it in the home. You just are basically, and I'm not even calling it a complaint, but I'm just going to use that word. You don't even say anything about it when he's smoking in the home. But the only time you're saying something about it is when he is with his baby mama and her husband. Let me tell you something. Okay, he should have the decency for you as your man and you as his woman to not do something that you dislike. If a person tells you they don't like something, why would you continuously do that to them? That does not make it fair or right just because you feel like it's harmless because your baby mama and your baby mama's new husband is involved in the situation. That does not make it harmless. That does not make it the fuck all right. So, Therefore, why would you keep doing something that somebody don't motherfucking like? Okay. 
your wife, Paris, does not like you smoking with your baby mama and she does not like you smoking with your baby mama and her husband. She feels a certain type of way about it. It makes her uncomfortable. Why would you continuously want to make somebody feel uncomfortable just because of your own fucking habits, wants, and needs? That's not right. We don't do shit. So because I keep telling you this and you still continuously do it, this is what old bitch me, April, would do. The next time that they think that they're about to go walking off and smoking weed together and they leave me with the fucking kids, a bitch like me would say, um, first of all, I don't know what time you on, but like I already told you before, we're not going to continue to keep continuously smoking with your baby mother and her husband. I already told you how it made me feel and we're not about to do this on this trip. That right there will solidify everything. The nigga won't fucking light up, nor his baby mama or her husband, because everybody's going to feel uncomfortable in the situation, okay? I'm not saying go in screaming with fucking guns blazing and shit and swords out like you're about to kill everybody the fuck off, but go there stern and firmly and let him know right there in front of everybody that he continuously be fucking smoking with. And you've already said on numerous occasions how it's made you feel. Listen, I've already told you and I've already had this conversation with you on several times about this whole scenario with you smoking with your baby mother. You don't have to say baby mama. Don't say baby mama because when you say baby mama, it seems like... um you know, very confrontational. I don't know. It's a word, but it's more or less, it's kind of like confrontational. Like normally you hear girls on the street like, oh yeah, that's his baby mama. You know, that's like, they, they either like on some dislike shit. It's just very confrontational. So don't use the word baby mama because it sounds like you dislike the person. So when you say it, use the word, the mother of your child. I, I told you already, I don't like you smoking with your daughter's mom or her husband. Or you can say the mother of your child or her husband. But just try to avoid using the word baby mama because then that bitch might have to say some shit. And then God forbid she have to say some shit. Then you have to be fighting her. And then it's just going to be a big mess where it didn't really have to get to that point. But I would definitely say something in front of him in a nice way, but in a stern way, but not as as too nice because it's getting out of hand. Now, like to me, that's like total embarrassment. Like, let me tell y'all something. I wouldn't, I would not deal with that shit. And on top of that, now you got both families like smoking together, except for one person. So you got Paris and her husband, and then you got baby mama and her husband. So Paris doesn't smoke, but that's just like me and my husband with, um, one of my baby fathers and his wife and my husband don't smoke and I'm smoking with them, first of all, I wouldn't even have a head left. He would go off of me so hard that it would be, to, I would just be like, please, somebody just strike me down right now. You know what I'm saying? Because that's disrespectful. Um, he would just be like, he, yeah, but you know what? He wouldn't even say anything in front of people because he's not that type of person, but he would say something to me about it and I wouldn't hear the ends of it. So I would just be like, oh God, please, somebody strike me down, please. Because when I say I wouldn't have no head, he would just be just, I would, I would just think my head would put pop off after a while because he would just continuously say something about it for that time frame, not like the day after the day after, but he would get his point across basically. And like after a while, I, my, my attention span zones out, not in a good way, not in a bad way, but I get it. I understand. I'm apologizing to you. That wasn't right, but he would still continue with it. But I understand that because I would too. But at that point, I would just be like, my head, let, let my head explode, okay? But either way, he wouldn't be happy about that shit. Like, that that would be a dis sign of disrespect. And vice versa, I would, like I said, he would wait till later to say something when we were around people, when we weren't around people. Me, April, I'm not waiting till later. I'm going to say something right there. And I don't give a fuck what your baby mama feel. If she don't like the shit that I said, it's too motherfucking bad, bitch. What you going to do? fight me, I wish you would. That's my attitude because I don't like to be embarrassed and I don't like to be put in an uncomfortable situation. Okay. And to me, that's an uncomfortable situation. That's a very uncomfortable situation. So it makes you feel like they're the adults and they're leaving behind the kids and you're one of the kids because you don't partake in like smoking marijuana. That's very uncomfortable. And okay, I get it, babe. You want to smoke. Well, can you smoke by yourself? Or how about better yet? Why don't you just smoke with her husband? I wouldn't even be so upset if it was just 
her baby baby mama husband and my husband smoking but i don't know and then again just not do it at all how about that can you wait until the proper time let them go ahead and smoke and you can smoke when you get home like you don't always have to get high but you know to each his own everybody is different but to me personally i find that to be like a huge sign of disrespect and the baby mama continuously slipping him weed does her baby father know or does her husband know that she's slipping her ex-boyfriend slash baby father weed because that right there is like as a thank you gift i don't know how anybody else would take it but i know i might take it as oh is this bitch trying to get back with you or she trying to um throw shade or or, or she trying to give hints like I mean, that's the type of mind frame that people get in. So what you may have to do, sweetheart, is talk to the baby mama too and just let her know, listen, um, I would really appreciate it if you stop giving my husband weed, okay? I don't know if I would use the word appreciate, but appreciate, appreciate can come off as being stern too because it all depends on the way you deliver the shit. So I may have to say something to her too because she's doing it unconsciously and consciously. You know what I'm saying? She feels like smoking weed is and giving weed as gifts is the thing you do, but it's really not. But I would definitely say something to him about the shit, not in private again, but if it happens again, Put your point across right then and there because I bet you that is probably what it's going to take. You know how you talk to somebody till they blew in the face, but they just don't get it until the shit pops off? That's what the fuck you have to do with him. You're going to have to just say in a manner, a stern manner, but not like uh, we could pop off manner. Like, listen, I already done told you we already had this conversation and I don't like being put in situations where I'm feeling uncomfortable. And I done told you about how I felt about you smoking weed with the mother of your child and her husband. Okay. That is putting me back in a situation that is making me feel very uncomfortable. I bet you, I, if I were me and I was the baby mama, I wouldn't even, I, you wouldn't fucked up my vibe. I wouldn't even want to smoke at that point. Or if I did, I wasn't smoking with your husband, my slash ex, my ex. I damn sure wasn't. And as far as the baby mama, I think that would be my opportunity right then and there to say, and also baby mama, I would really appreciate it if you stopped giving him weed. That I would really appreciate it. Because it's it's bringing an issue into our household. Bottom line, and if the bitch try to get smart, I'd be like, listen, bitch. You know what I'm saying? But I find like it to be very disrespectful. So yeah, if it happens again, that's what you're gonna have to do. Can't keep beating a dead horse, like beating the dead horse, beating the dead horse, beating the dead horse. He just doesn't get it. He feels like it's all right. Like it's cool. Smoke in your house with your family around, but don't do that shit with your baby mom and her husband. And damn sure don't go in nobody's fucking driveway smoking weed at their funeral. Like, who does that? That's so ghetto. That is so fucking ratchet. Like, oh my God. And disrespectful. Like, dang. You couldn't just fucking walk off. Anyway, on to the next. All right, you guys. Sorry about that. I had to, um, well, not sorry about anything, but, um, well, yeah, I am apologizing because if you see me chewing gum, my mouth was so dry and I had to, I just kept drinking all this water. Okay. And I'm just full. My stomach is stuffed in the water. So, um, I had to get the gum. So I, I do apologize if you just see me chewing the gum. Um, but it was either that or the peppermint. So the gum worked better. Okay. So let's get on to the next one. Hey, April. Girl, I love, love, love the content on your channel. And girl, we are New York sisters, so need I say more? I am from Queens as well. Anyway, on to the real talk. I will change names for you. You can call me Shay and you can call him Dave. So my husband and I have been married for a year and nine months and have spoken about divorce at least four times already. Yes, you heard it right. I am 39 and he is 49. I've never thought I would get married, but when I did, I knew it would be I knew it would be forever. Hmm. Now nah, I don't think that. When, when we met, he was wonderful, but he also had just lost everything, literally, and he was rebuilding his life. He was humble, loving, attentive, and everything I have I'm never had. The first year and a half was rocky because I had so much that I had to deal with to get me right. Wait, what? Yeah, the first year and a half was rocky because I had so much that I had to deal with to get me right, mentally and spiritually. But I didn't want to lose my man. 
I put him through a lot. Anyway, we left New York and moved to Kentucky in 2016. We got married and here we are. The problem is hubby is a, tr um, she wrote trick driver, a truck driver long distance and is gone for two and three weeks at a time. When he comes home, he is home for about two days. Yes, I knew he was a truck driver when we met, but as I stated earlier, he had lost everything. So it wasn't working at the time. Every time I bring up to him that I am not happy, he says, well, maybe I'm not what you want. You need to go find you a nine to five man. I mean, really? I didn't get married to be home alone. I want to make memories, memories. I want to make memories. I want to wake up and go to bed next to my husband. My entire family is in New York, so I am here alone. My son, my mom, everyone is in New York. April, I left about a month ago, but I love him and I didn't want to feel like I failed. So I came back a week later. I came back knowing the situation wouldn't change. Yes, I know it doesn't make sense. I am depressed all the time. We argue. The disconnect is real. My son is 20 and I am still young. I feel like this is the time that as a married couple, we should, we should be living our best life. My husband's dream is to own a truck. He loves being on the road and says he doesn't like coming home every day. He states he is working towards his dream. However, where does that leave me? Leave us. At this point, I feel as though we should just cut our losses and go our separate ways. We are not on the same page and it's not going to change. Ashamed and heartbroken. Well, I'm going to say this, Shay. She did, she did say call Shay, right? I'm going to say this much, Shay. You are absolutely right. I don't like to break up nobody's happy home or marriage, but... They've been married for a year and nine months and have talked about divorce four times. Now, she already knew he was a truck driver when she met him, but he didn't have anything. He was literally trying to rebuild his life. So, you know, he finally did find a truck driving job and he'd be gone for like two to three weeks. When he comes home, he's there for two days and she feels alone. She has nobody. It's just her and him in Kentucky and the rest of her family is in New York. So she's by herself. and. She's been saying this to him, like she wants someone who is there constantly, where she could wake up in the bed next to them. They could live their best life. They can go on vacation together. And he's he doesn't want to be home. He said he doesn't like to come home. He likes to be on the road. So maybe he's not what she needs. She needs to buy herself a nine to five man. He working towards his dream, which is to buy a truck. Now, first of all, she's 39, he's 49. What the fuck you going to do? Buy a truck and be how old driving truck? I mean... I mean, if that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. I'm not knocking it, but y'all definitely are on two different pages. Like seriously, because for one, you just stated what you wanted and he stated what he don't like doing, which is he don't like coming home. And if someone was to say to me that they don't like coming home after two to three weeks, and even though you're there for two days, you don't like coming home. Well, damn, is it me? That would make me feel like some type of way. Like I would feel like, well, damn, you don't even like coming home to see me because I know if that were me and I felt like really in love and loving the person, I would be so excited to come home. Like I wouldn't want to be away from the person for two to three weeks, but I understand we all got to make a living, but damn, I definitely wouldn't say I don't like coming home. Who the fuck don't like to get home after two to three weeks? So that right there makes me feel like maybe in his head or maybe he has feelings that he doesn't want to express to you because for one, if a man really loves his woman, he's definitely not going to say, I don't like coming home after two to three weeks. I don't like being home. I'm working toward my dreams. He would take into consideration what, you know what I'm saying? You are expressing to him. Some men will probably even say, well, you know what, babe, since you don't work or whatever, why don't you come on the road with me? So that way you don't have to be alone and we can experience this together. Even though it's my work, you're still right there and we still with each other. We traveling around the country on my job's dime. That's what some men would do, but he's not even doing that. He's basically like, he likes to be on the road. He don't like coming home. And damn, you don't even like coming home for two days to see your own wife that you brought to Kentucky with you to marry. That would make me look at the situation a whole lot different. Like, okay, either dude, um, just really is working hard towards his dream or really do don't really care about what we got going on. He's not trying to compromise with you. He had straightforward said he likes to be on the road and he's working towards his dream and he don't like to come home. You on the other hand, you want, and you need to go get you a nine to five man. Now 
he said that so freely, like it didn't freely, like loosely, like it didn't even bother him to say that, you know, your husband might be in his own world because he's, he's a loner. He's in his truck and he's driving back and forth for three weeks at a time. However, I'm not sure how often you speak to him, but how do we know he's really driving in that truck on the road for two to three weeks at a time on his own? He could have himself a lady. Maybe that's the reason why he don't like coming home. Maybe that's the reason. And I'm not trying to speculate anything, but I'm just saying these are different various reasons of maybe why he don't like to come home. He working on his dream. He really is not in love with you or he got himself a lady that is riding along with him during his traveling time for work. Now, either way, you want a nine to five man, you want someone that you could wake up next to. I get that. I would feel the same type of way. Like if it were me and I, I would feel the same type of way. Like I don't, I wouldn't want my husband to drive truck cause I wouldn't be able to see him every day. And that would just drive me crazy. It already drives me crazy now not having to see him every day. But anyway, and like you said, y'all are very distant. Y'all argue when y'all do get to see each other or when you get to speak to one another and what you want, he doesn't want and isn't willing to give you. And also at the same token, if he really is working towards his dream and he really likes doing this as a job, and this is all truth that he's, he's saying, then it would be selfish of you to force him to stop doing what he enjoys doing and is working towards as a goal and a dream because of something that you wanted. You understand what I'm saying? Like, if he's really being honest about the fact that he wants to buy a truck, he's working towards his dream of buying a truck, and that's being his honest, 100% honest, and there's nobody else on the side, then it would be definitely selfish of you, Shay, to expect your husband to stop working as a truck driver because you want him around all the time and you want to wake up next to him. Okay, and you guys should be living your best life. I say that because <clears throat> when a person has a dream and a goal, you want to uplift it. You want to, you know, build them up, give them the confidence to, you know, get to that state in their life when they reach that goal and they have accomplished that goal and dream. And if you knew that that's what he was all about when you first married him or when you first got with him, then you knew what you were taking on, okay? Now, here's the thing. If you guys don't have any interest in the same things anymore and y'all are arguing and stuff and you don't want to be there and you're depressed, why keep putting yourself in misery? Like, if this is depressing you and it's making you heartbroken and it's it's leaving you alone and there's no one there for you, no support system, no nothing, it's time for you to pack your bag, sweetheart, and go back to New York, okay? Your husband is going to do what he want to do because, for one, he's 10 years older than you. He's growner. He's older. He's He may be a little bit more wiser, but he's but for one, he's grown. He's going to do what he want to do because he's a grown-ass man. And you're going to do what you want to do because you're a grown-ass woman. And he might be right in some aspects. You need someone that's a 9 to 5. There's nothing wrong with admitting to that. There's nothing wrong with saying it to you. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, April, you're right. It's true. And there's nothing wrong with it. OK, if that's what you need because you don't like truck drivers, then you're entitled to that. That's just like me saying I don't like truck drivers. I wouldn't want to because that's how I feel, too. I totally get that. But it's sad that you guys moved all the way to Kentucky and also that you guys have been married for only a year and nine months. And you've spoke about divorce four times. That right there goes to show you that it's this relationship is not like call it at your loss, but call it like that you learned something from it and you know not to do it for the next go round. You can't say chuck it up and call it a loss because you didn't really lose out on anything, but like, you know, some time, which you can easily, you know, call that experience because we lose time when we do dumb shit all the time, but it's also knowledge. It gives us knowledge and it gives us experience to know for the next motherfucking time, don't do that dumb shit. But then we have those people who keep continuously doing it. So anyway, um, but don't chuck it up as a loss. Chuck it up as a learning experience and move on. You know what I'm saying? Just move on. Don't leave yourself stuck in a place where you really don't want to be because that's the reason why you guys are 
ba um, battling, arguing with each other back and forth because you don't want to be there and he don't want to fucking be there. You know what I'm saying? So if neither one of y'all want to be there, then you guys need to say, you know what? We try. I love you. I wish you nothing but the best. But this is best for me, and this is what I want to do, and I want to just walk away with us both being on the same page, as well as agree to disagree and be okay with everything. That's it. Point blank period. You don't have to do anything else but get your priorities in order and sit down and focus and understand where I'm coming from, but also think to yourself, is this what I really want? I wouldn't be happy in a situation like that out in the middle of nowhere with no family. My husband ain't even there. Like, man, please. I wouldn't, I would not want to be in that situation. And it is depressing. And the next time you leave, bitch, don't go back. You went back to what? An empty home? Because he doesn't, he's not even there. He's gone for two, two to three weeks at a time. So you went back for what? To sit alone? Honey, honey, where do we do this at? Okay. Don't take it as a loss and definitely don't take it as an insult. Just take it as you've learned something. If he said that he doesn't want to be home, he doesn't like coming home, then take that as, you know what, it's time for me to move on. That's it. That's exactly what I would do in your situation. And you know, divas and devos, leave down below how you feel about the whole <clears throat> situation. All right, you guys, I got to go. I'm about to choke to death up here. My mouth is so dry. I'm going to get me something to eat because I forgot I didn't eat breakfast. Um, but look out for this wig video tomorrow. I love you guys. I hope I didn't talk your ears off. And I will see you guys in the soon to come video. Peace.